Hey everybody, my name is Jared and I am a Master Mason in the state of Mississippi in the United States of America. And today's viewer's question is, what is expected of new members? Well, everything and nothing. So I, I, it's hard for me to address this because I know that how new members are put through the process is different in every jurisdiction and in many cases different in each individual lodge. So let me give you an example of kind of what happens with a brand new member at, at my lodge and what I did and maybe that will give you some sort of sense of things. So um, here in the state of Mississippi you're not quote unquote a member until you are a master mason so I, I'm going to address your question as, as if it's that as if it means you know a somebody who has received their master mason degree what is expected of them if your question is what's expected of somebody who was just initiated uh, then we can maybe look into doing a separate video about that particular subject so uh, let's presume that you've received your three degrees you're now a master mason uh, now what now what's expected of you well I think what uh, the hope is what everybody in the lodge uh, hopes that you will do uh, is continue to study uh, that you won't give up and think that now you're a master mason now you know everything uh, we try to do our best to make sure that people who are raised in our lodge know that now you can start learning now you're a master mason now you can be exposed to all the learning that's available to you and now you can really start to learn uh, the the bigger meanings uh, behind everything now that isn't to mean that you haven't learned anything as an entered apprentice and a fellow craft but it is to impress upon you that just because you're a master mason does not mean you know everything there's still so much more out there for you to to learn so uh, we would uh, hope that you're still looking for knowledge whether that's by uh, reading books speaking to uh, brethren in the lodge visiting other lodges joining uh, appendant bodies and learning their information whatever it is we don't want you to stop learning uh, what's expected of them uh, in any other terms well we we would hope that you're willing to accept uh, some sort of appointment or election within the lodge uh, so it may be that as soon as you are made a master mason that you will find out that there is already some need within your lodge maybe it's something that feels like it's the bottom of the totem pole maybe there's a need for a steward and the only thing that they want you to do is to make sure that the tables are set and that everything gets cleaned up after lodge it's at that point where you have to be willing to suck up your pride and not try to say, man, I'm, I'm a master mason now. You, you know, I'm not going to clean the table. It's a totally wrong attitude. Uh, you need to be able to serve the lodge in whatever capacity may be needed with the full understanding that unless you go into a particular position that has the tendency of having somebody for a long time just for the stability of it, such as the secretary's position, uh, that you're only going to be there for a short amount of time. And it's your job to do that position in the best way possible and to leave it better than you got it. So then the next guy takes over, you can say, hey, look, here's a couple tips of things that really mattered in making this job easy while I was in it. Take it or leave it, uh, but I just wanted to pass that along to you. Be ready to serve in, in those positions no matter what it may be and no matter how lofty of a position it may seem to you or not. Uh, let's see, what else would we expect of somebody? I think um, what, what I personally would expect out of somebody is that they will, inside themselves, decide to hold themselves to a higher standard. I would expect that from the day somebody uh, even joins uh, the fraternity, but especially after they're made a Master Mason, uh, that they would second guess every action that they make and every word that comes out of their mouth and make sure that they are in fact leading their life uh, leading their life in a way that Freemasonry has taught them they should lead it uh, and uh, 
if they're not doing that, uh, then, then they're probably not listening to the principles that they were taught because I really doubt uh, that they came into the fraternity already that unspotted, so to speak. Uh, so that's something that I would expect. I would expect for them to sort of tighten up and, uh, and do a little bit more um, self-reflection and thinking about how they're interacting with the world uh, and even how they're interacting with themselves as well but that's a much deeper topic for another time outside of those things I can't really say that there's much that's uh, expected of somebody uh, those are all the things that um, were sort of uh, a part of my experience uh, right after I was raised as a master mason I was asked if I would serve pro tempore for our junior deacon uh, who had been appointed but was then very shortly um, told he had to move for his employment uh, he was in something to do with the construction business and he had a new site he had to go to and was taken away from the lodge and they said hey look there's no way this guy's coming back this year we know it uh, would you be willing to learn this chair and and sit in it and of course I was uh, now that's not common uh, most places uh, the junior deacon would not be where you would start off right away and certainly not the same month that you were raised uh, but as it happens I'm a fairly quick learner uh, my lodge didn't have as many people attending the the meetings uh, then as we do now uh, and so it was a matter of hey you seem like a smart guy there's an open chair go sit in it and I'm sure that's probably a common experience that's felt uh, throughout the United States, but certainly not in every single lodge. Okay, I, th I think I've tapped myself out on what we expect out of somebody. Um, higher principles of behavior and morality, to be willing to serve and to serve cheerfully, and to s continue to seek knowledge and not presume that just because you're Master Mason you know everything. So three things uh, I think are uh, the big umbrella topics for this. If you have something uh, that you would expect out of a new Master Mason, or if there are set expectations uh, that are verbally communicated to uh, new members of your lodge then I'd be interested to learn about those so drop a comment down below. Thank you all so much for taking the time to watch and don't forget that if you do have any other questions to leave those below as well that's where I get all the questions for these videos is out of the comment section below. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch. We'll see you next time. Bye.